Okay, so today uh, we're going to talk about the subclades of R1B and then I'm going to show you some in-depth maps and explain the uh, the twofold European uh, Indo-European invasions, Aryan invasions of Europe, uh, the R1A and R1B peoples. So uh, these images today are all uh, credited to Makiamo of Wikipedia. Again, I'll leave it in the about section. Uh, and and I can't stress enough how much uh, how valuable that website is. Uh, how much uh, anyone who wants to know more should go read up there. Uh, right. So R1B, uh, as I showed on the last map. Uh, begins in the area here it's got slightly slightly further north in the, the southern region of the Caucasus but there on the border of the Caucasus and Anatolia uh, it, it starts out there or at least uh, it, it moves there very early on from from further east that other population I mentioned um, uh, on the eastern side of the Caspian Sea uh, near the high mount of the whole of R1 uh, so yeah it moves it moves into Anatolia there and then from there all of the clades split off so first, the oldest clade I talked about, the African and Levantine one, it heads into Africa. It gets all the way to Chad, where it's um, around Lake Chad, where it's highest today, and uh, through through Egypt, obviously the ancient Egypt's uh, ancient Egypt's very interesting, significant civilization. Uh, many of their dynasties were R1B, and it does reach Europe as well, but it becomes extinct there through later waves of. Uh, on re invasions. Uh, so from from there it moves north, it moves up onto the Pontic steppe, Pontic Caspian steppe. Uh, it moves further east again, as we saw with the the uh, Afanasevo and the Tukarians, and then it moves north as well uh, into. Uh, I showed there was that one example that has been found in Russia, uh, but then the bulk moves west, so it moves into the Balkan region. Uh, 4,200 to 2,500 BC over that period uh, gradually expands, moves further south still into Greece into 1,800 BC, uh, moves west again into uh, Central Europe uh, from 2,800 to 2,500. Uh, this so here here we have uh, L51 clade being formed and then the L11 clade being formed and those uh, give rise to the P312 clade which is the one that's Hallstatt associated the, the Central European uh, Celtic civilization I spoke about there and then as you can see on this map everything uh, all of the, the major western clades split off from there they're all Hallstatt expansions so Hallstatt's uh, very Important in European history, in Western European history, particularly. Yep. So you can see here various various clades. L21 in the British Isles. We've got the Atlantic branch, which is L uh, L21 DF27. Uh, you've got oh yeah, you've got the French branch as well. Another another uh, subclade of DF27. Uh, U106 is the main Germanic pater West Germanic paternity. Um, and a minor paternity in other Germanics, not Germanics, uh, and then yeah, you've got various others. U five, U one five two, which is Italic. Uh, so that was the uh, one of the main paternities of Romans and the main paternity of the the Celtic tribes of North Italy. So here we have a few more images depicting the uh, expansions, invasions of Europe by the the Aryans, the Indo-Europeans, R1A and R1B cultures. Uh, again, these images belong to Makiyamo and I'm using them with his express permission. So, uh, first R1B expands the southern Yamna, uh, expand into the northern Yamna horizon. The extension of their culture uh, becomes more predominantly R1B. In the west, they move into old Europe. You can also see Kuroraxis, the expansion of J2 into the Levant from its Caucasian homeland has begun. As we move on, uh, the Corded Ware culture now invades. The Corded Ware culture now dominates uh, Eastern Europe, and you can see the mingling. I talked about the, the mingling of Corded Ware with the ceramic comb culture that formed the Baltics, so the Uralics and the Indo Europeans mingling there. Uh, 
the foundation of what will be the Nordic Bronze Age is laid here by the Corded Ware invasion of Scandinavia. And you can see Corded Ware mingling with the megalithics, the bell beakers, in uh, the Germany area and Central Europe. So you can see the Proto-Italic Celtics, the, the people who spoke the language and brought the genes of uh, Western Europe, are now sitting in the northern Balkans and they're beginning to expand westwards uh, into that Germany and Central Europe area. J2 is expanding further. J2 is now moving throughout the Mediterranean, as you can see with the Minoan, uh, Minoans beginning there. <coughs> By this point, uh, we have uh, R1B having mingled with the Bell Beakers in most of uh, the northwest of Europe. The Unitists culture is formed, which is majority R1B, and then you have various R1B tribes in the Balkan region. Uh, as we move further, this is the, the second last image, and by here you can see Western Europe is already predominantly R1B. Uh, R1B has moved throughout Anatolia in the east, and R1B is now mingling with the Nordic Bronze Age, which has is, which is come about its full form. Here is Hallstatt, the all-important Hallstatt civilization, the Celtic civilization of Central Europe, which formed uh, all of the peoples of Western Europe through its offshoots. So the Italics, uh, the Celtic tribes of Northern Italy and foundation, one of the foundations of the Roman people, along with Etrurian roots. Uh, there to the south, to the southwest and the west, you've got uh, the Gauls and the Atlantics, and then to the northwest, you've got the British Bronze Age, and you've got the West Germanics and the Germanics at large to the north.